Wie der Titel schon andeutet, geht es um prekäre Arbeits- und Lebenswelten, insbesondere in Zeiten der Krise. Es geht um Fragen der Organisierung gegen die herrschenden Zumutungen. Es geht also um die leitende Frage der gesamten Tagung nach den Möglichkeiten der Konstitution der Subalternen als politischem Subjekt. You look at the segregation, you look at the actual demographic data and you show that segregation indices in France have stagnated or gone down steadily for 30 years. And yet the discourse is that, oh, there is this extraordinary new thing that is occurring today. It's not insecure work. It is segregation, it is ghettoization, it is ethnicity. So the language of neighborhood and space, the language of ethnicity and diversity. And the third, which is, as you will see, is linked to the previous two, is the language of crime, delinquency, and violence. Oh, there's a new phenomenon at the end of the 20th century. Youth violence. Brand new. Didn't happen before. You know, uh, um, and it's threatening, and it's really threatening the foundations of our society. And it happens to be in those neighborhoods that are the problem neighborhoods where there's a lot of employment, but they are the problem neighborhoods in which there is a lot of immigrants, which means that the problem is one of ethnicity and integration and diversity. So we have a problem of space and diversity and delinquency. The only sensible goal seems to be to get out of that space that is primarily characterized by everything it lacks. Lacks security, citizenship, decent work, shelter. So people want to leave that space rather than to improve the conditions of that existence, uh, which used to be a strategy advocated in the U.S. ghetto, for example. Uh, you know, so this is the penal wing of the state, the police, the courts, the prison system. This is what I call, by analogy with welfare or workfare, I call this prison fare. This is a public program for the poor. I mean, 90% of inmates come from the most precarious sectors of the working class. In the United States, half of jail inmates come from family who live below half of the poverty line. Not the poverty line, half of the poverty line. And if you look at the profile of people who receive welfare, and the profile of the people who are in jail, they're exactly identical, save for one dimension, gender. That is, the women are managed by workfare, and the men, that is, their men, their husbands, their sons, their brothers, their cousins, their uncles, are managed by the penal system that has been rolled out to do what? To contain, to contain the social disorders created by economic deregulation and social welfare retrenchment. Er hat uns nochmal dargestellt, die Fragmentierung, die starkliche Produktion von Unsicherheit, die Stigmatisierung und Selbststigmatisierung der prekären, sowie natürlich die Kontrolle und Disziplinierung der verunsicherten Klasse. Also eigentlich die Bedingungen und Dilemmata für jede Form von Gegenwehr oder gar Organisation, über die wir ja in dieser Tagung sprechen wollen. So, there, things look pretty grim, according to this analysis. <laughs> uh, now, Loic will say, no, 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 I'm wrong, but I think that Loic is proposing a functionalist analysis. And uh, some of you can, with me, remember the 1970s, when everybody on the left, no, you can't, I, I, I can tell that right away. <laughs> everybody on the left was enamored of functionalism. Of, uh, and what a functionalist analysis really did is it tried to explain the existence of policies and the institutions that were structured by policies in terms of their consequences for other institutions uh, for the stability of other institutions and for dominant groups, for class domination. Well, uh, I actually don't think that was such a bad intellectual strategy. It needed to be 
shored up by more analysis of the causal processes which had produced those policies and institutions, and it needed to be shored up by better detailed empirical data <coughs> on the consequences <coughs> of the policies, and especially on not only the functional consequences of the policies. Right. And what I try to do in punishing the poor is I don't claim to analyze the whole of social policy or the whole of penal policy uh, or the whole of crime and law and order. I, I, I deliberately, and I say this in the introduction of the book, focus specifically on those elements that converge, on those elements that come and create a single organizational contraption for the regulation of poverty. You know, and, and I say, well, there's plenty of things that don't fit into that model on the welfare side, on the penal side, but I'm gonna disregard them, and I'm gonna make the argument that there are all these elements that do converge and, and, and create a new regime of regulation of, of poverty. What so do you know about the migrants living in the, in the neighborhoods uh, we are talking about in the banlieue during the 60s and 70s? No one cared about them, no one. And they were no French citizen. They had, they, they had anyway, well, they, they, they could be heard from, from no one, and they weren't uh, literate, literated because they, they, they were not, um, um, you know, schooled, uh, educated in the, school, in the French school system. Now, their children ha enjoy much more rights than their parents, and that's at least what they say. Uh, so even, even if I, of course, share the view that we are suffering in France a kind of... Um, uh, Grow, growth of the uh, law and order stances and policies and so on. The, 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 the objects, you know, the population we are talking about are much more capable today to resist against that than their parents. Um, you know, the, uh, the anti-French, this is, you know, an Islamic anti-French, the hatred of France is the basis of this right. You didn't find this discourse in 1989, but you do find it in 2005, and so I think this also indicates that the, the, the political returns to, to rioting as a form of, you know, sort of low-level, uh, from the ground up bargaining is, you know, is not, is not working because here we are th two and a half decades later and you still need the riots to get the politicians to listen. Well, political regulation. That's it. We're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, but it works for the politicians. Thanks a lot for yeah, this well, great <laughs> debate. <laughs> Genau darum geht es uns ja, um die Möglichkeit und Unmöglichkeit von Organisierung und Reaktion, die beiden machen einfach weiter.